and it's still syncing and now it says we're live hello hello <laughs> hi welcome to the stocknet zombies i'm amy also known as jane itma and i'm megan also known as just run it and this is episode 354. cool i'm yeah. just looking at my background every time i'm like how much of my junk is in the background i mean you got a nice background that never really changes but it's like ugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I noticed that at uh, I noticed that at work as well, right? Like, there's often like everybody has the blurry background on, um, but then sometimes there's people like wandering by and they kind of look like ghosts, right? Because it's like trying to blur them, but sometimes it's focusing, <laughs> right? So you're like, oh my gosh, you've got a ghost behind you. <laughs> um, and then yeah, just like sometimes things will peek out, right? Where you're like, oh, there's a storage unit behind. You. <laughs> So yeah, I've got a nice little, I would be hard pressed to find a better like unchanging backdrop here. So right, right. <laughs> I have I have blocking mats from my project that was blocking. And then I have like this basket here that I haven't put away yet. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Well, I'm back. I'm uh thank you so much everybody for your patience on uh last week. Uh I was not quite traveling, but I was travel adjacent and I was trying to get a lot of stuff wrapped up um with being gone. Um so yeah, I went to Virginia Beach last week uh and weekend and it was fantastic. I'm trying to not let the um trip home, which was a little arduous. I think I was going with horrendous, but now I'm gonna say arduous. Um, there was lots of changing of flights, even um, prior to my being there, um, really long layovers, lots of delays. And then at the cherry on the top was that when I got back into Rochester, um, the uh, the shuttle I had missed by uh, just a couple of minutes. Like I literally was like lugging my suitcase, running up the, up the <laughs> escalator and um, didn't get a courtesy call, which I have in the past. Um, through the Minneapolis back to Rochester shuttles of like, hey, where are you at? Didn't get that at all. Um, and then had to sit there for another two and a half hours waiting. I was stranded waiting for the the next one to arrive. So yeah, when it gets closer to ZK, I definitely feel like I'll be advocating for a specific shuttle service recommendation for folks. <laughs> Right. Not the one you don't, you just got. Yeah, done. but it was great. Again, um, not, have never been to Virginia. Um, was great to see. It was kind of like, um, it wasn't complete East Coast. It wasn't complete South. You know, it's kind of that, that Venn diagram of, of, of folks, but saw a lot of like the, the Memphis Hollies and the Miss Cheryl's and Vonda came up and it was kind of, it was a, a subset of the, the ZK folks that we see uh, year after year, which was fantastic. Um, as well as some brand new faces, which was also very fun and talked a lot about socks. Like the whole focus was socks, 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 socks. So, um, and you know that I've been knitting a lot. of <laughs> so, Yes, yeah. So don't know if we've got any new faces out there that have now heard about Stocking at Zombies and what we do here because of the Virginia Beach yarn getaway. Um, but that Martha throws a wonderful event on at Virginia Beach. I feel like I brought the cold with me, perhaps. Mm. <laughs> like the first day, the first, first full day there was like super warm. It was like 60s, 70s. And then the remainder of the time it was like, kind of what it was like here when I returned on Sunday. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I brought the cold with me <laughs> to Virginia Beach. I swear I didn't put it in my suitcase. It followed me. It followed me. So yes, it was great. We got some We OMGs um, knit up, um, got to talk about um, all kinds of fun sock stuff. And um, yeah, just thank you to, to Martha and the whole crew for being very welcoming and fabulous um, and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself, so. Yeah, no, I, I have no doubt. Um, I've heard of a lot of people going to that year after year. It yeah. sounds like a good time. Yeah, yeah, it was great, great. I got I got some education about what makes crab good versus what make crab, makes crab bad, you know, being kind of a Midwesterner that does enjoy her seafood but does not have <laughs> necessarily a a com uh, a complex palette for seafood. <laughs> well, yeah. So I think Carol said she was going to try to bring some crab. Oh, go ahead. 
I was just going to say whatever we get. It's not super fresh. Yeah, exactly. Carol was going to, is focused on trying to bring to ZK this year some good crab. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Thank you, Carol. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, it was great. Um, and again, wanted to thank anybody or welcome anybody that um, is now joining us yes, based welcome. off of my kind of sharing my knitter's tale and um, the fun that we, that we've got going on here. So. Yeah, I had a nice lazy weekend. Um, I don't know, the, the CrossFit um, game season opened up on Thursday. So I've been kind of getting back into that nerdy, um, sporty, but not really. I don't know. I'm not very sporty of a person, but CrossFit is my thing. Mm -hmm. So i um, <clears throat> been getting into that. Also a few... Um, uh, soccer games are starting up again so the the major league soccer is going on so that was fun but other than that uh, not much and yeah so yeah it, all the new people we have a lot of fun stuff going on right now with our different KALs so absolutely so we better get into the administrati because I know yeah. you said you had a pile of finished objects and I've <laughs> had quite a few sitting here as well it's been a good long bit since we've talked about finished objects. Um, so we did have the trough KAL. I don't know if you've got that to hold up. I did not grab mine. Um, it's one of your finished objects, I know. Yes. I just have, <clears throat> this is the um, DK test knit. Got it. And I didn't have any notes. Um, I do need to submit my yardages, but. Very pretty. Yeah. What yeah, a fun I edge. Did. Yeah, it's an I-cord um that alternates mm -hmm. but um yeah the um I decided to sub one of the DK weight yarns with a um what do you want to call it a fingering with mohair mm -hmm. held double there so that beautiful <clears throat> I can put it down um so we had um we, so I, we had had Queen City Yarn, which I got to see Janice and all of her fabulousness um, this weekend as well, um, that gave a presentation. So one of the prizes is this um, early evening. I confirmed with Janice that okay. this was in stock, that she did not have to dye it up. Um, I was like, I <laughs> wasn't trying to be mean after you told me that this was one of the more complicated colorways. Um, that you that you die up. Um, she said it was in stock, so there's no bad juju um, <laughs> associated with me requesting this specific skein. Um, and then the MVP, Madam Vice President, I thought they made a beautiful pairing. Um, and then we were also going to do um, select a um, a water bottle or a um, got my ZKN one here, a water bottle or um, a t-shirt from our, um, our swag shop. Um, and cool. so I, I draw, I drew two. There was very beautiful, some of them test knits like yours. Um, some of them, uh, the, um, the, you know, the, the OG trough <laughs> in the, in the thread. So thank you out to everybody that KAL, they were beautiful. Um, Lynn and Ingrid, blue bear skin, uh, a blue bear skin. Yes. <laughs> Uh, were our two winners that um, I randomly selected in scrolling through the um, so contact me with your choice of either the Queen City Yarn Duo or um, the swag out of the shop um, and that can be any of our logo items so yeah yours is beautiful Amy I really like um, the depth of color on that blue yeah. is this was the mohair the the yeah the mohair was the blue right um <clears throat> this was a, a Jeanette's um, blue from our, our kit. Okay. Plus a like teal. Okay. Mohair. Fun. So it, Fun combo. It, it's complement both of them actually mm -hmm. um, really well. And looks very warm too. It is. <laughs> Along with the sweater, right? So <laughs> you're like, double. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then we also had the self-striping. So we've got the second month of the self-striping. Amy's got prizes to hold up there. Um, so this is Care Bear with Things in that um, private reserve stash of 
uh, Superwash Rambouillet. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of more of a worsted Aran weight. Uh, and it will be self-striping, of course. So mm -hmm. Care Bear with Bang. Mm -hmm. That makes some fun mitts or a cowl or a hat. Yep. And then, um, then the separate secondary prize is the uh, balm, the badass balm. And then the best friend um, duo uh, progress keepers. Very fun. Um, and we'll also throw in on that one, there is currently a super exclusive self-striping logo that you can only get <laughs> through winning. Um, so that's kind of fun. So we've got three prizes there. Um, the winners there were Nutmeg Knitter, uh, Tales of Yarn, and Mojave Knitter. So again, reach out this time to Amy <laughs> with your choice and your address. Um, and like, again, if the, the, the swag out of our shop is a water bottle, that one's pretty easy, but we also need a size if you're going with a t-shirt on any of those logo, logo prizes. So yarn, balm, BA balm, um, swag item on the self-striping. Um, and then uh, for Lynn and Ingrid, there's the Queen City Yarn Duo or um, the swag in the shop. So, yep. Very exciting. Congratulations Very exciting. to all the winners. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And then we also had, um, we were remiss the, the last time um, we got to a month end chatting about the, um, the ZKKAL. Yeah, so we, um, in January, we had something uh, where you got um, points based on um, non-yarn photo items. Yeah, the non-yarn photo to kind of get our vendors that don't have yarn in their shops kind of more integrated into our KAL. And um, we had some people that kind of put on the turbo boosters and were just like, um, super uh, overachievers. Yes, overachievers. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, so we uh, grabbed uh, one from each team, and uh, those people will be getting uh, some swag from the shop. So uh, the winner on my team was Christine KDLB. And the winner on my team was Christy Socknubbins. Was is there a correlation there? Christy, Christine? <laughs> no, no. They were both gung ho, and they did did and did a lot of entries um, to help their team kind of cross the finish line. There, um, it was a very close race. I think we were within one of each other at the end of that mm -hmm. month. So um, we wanted to celebrate people's efforts, um, and we found uh, that this would be a nice way to do that. And then um, I also wanted to mention that if you haven't done your frenemy yet and you haven't found your frenemy yet, please get out there. You can start at any time. You didn't have to get your frenemy before March 1st. You can get them whenever you get them. It can be the last week in April, as long as you're you know, willing to finish. Um, that's all that's required. And only one person has to finish, unlike in previous years when we were we were actually doing twinsies, both people had to finish. Um, with frenemies, you can finish up quickly, enter in. Um, if you're the first of your pair to get done, you're entered into a separate prize pool and you get your point, your bonus points counted. Um, the incentive for the frenemy to finish is so that they don't you know, run away with all those points, right? You gotta mm -hmm. finish your project to get your points, your bonus points in. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yard. Points are confusing to me because I had to sorry. code the dashboard for the yes, yes. Um, for not the bonus points, points yeah. bonus yardage. Yeah, bonus yardage. There you go. Yeah. Um, and then uh, what else do I want to say about that? Oh, um, that drawing that that you get are getting entered into for completing the project first. Um, we're going to be giving away a sweaters quantity. Mm -hmm of our goodie bag yarn. We don't know which one yet. They're not all created yet, um, but that prize will be awarded to you at the retreat. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I'm there excited might be some smaller that. things, but but that's the big one. Yeah. Sweaters quantity of yarn. So yeah. Um, what did we decide, Megan? Was that three or four games? Four. 
four skeins of yarn. Okay. Of and 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 are fingering. we giving away base fingering? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's important because sweaters quantity on four on some bases is not does not um, right. True. Yeah. True. No. This so, this should be um, a two sweaters quantity for any. Yeah. Yep. At least uh, at least to be able to do a short sleeve um, yep. with sixteen hundred yards, right? So let's think okay. of some of Megan's patterns, right? Like uh, some of those. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, in addition to that, so that's the ZK folks going to ZK. I know that sometimes all of the KALs and stuff that we have going on, um, Amy and I are very busy. <laughs> if you can't tell, we're very busy. Um, so the ZKN KAL is, um, you know, inspired by um, Leslie Robinson and Nick Graffiti um, doing the brioche knitting for beginners and beyond. So we're going to have her come and talk to us the 12th um, at 1 p.m. Um, and so we're doing a brioche along in uh, March and April. And that doesn't have to be specifically her patterns, um, but I think that there may I might throw in some fun extra bonuses based off of after she speaks with us and we get um, we get <laughs> enabled that mm -hmm. um, with that KAL. So. Um, yeah, all things brioche here for ZKN in April or in March and April. I'm super excited to have her come and speak. And then, um, lest you feel disappointed that you didn't win anything, um, uh, we are doing a share, show and share on Saturday this, this weekend. Um, maybe have some prizes there for folks that, um, that show and share either their self-striping. So there's two months of self-striping there that you could show off or your trough. Yes. So um, always love those show and shares, uh, you know, kind of as a callback to some of our conversations with Jesse Ostermiller about color. Um, you know, you often see when somebody else has taken it maybe a different direction than the design, it can be very enabling. So we had the same thing yeah. happen at Virginia Beach. We kind of went around the room and people were talking about their, their items that they were wearing. And somebody was like, I have never looked, I never would have looked at that pattern twice if I didn't see what you did with it, with your yarn, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's exciting. And I think it would be a, a good idea to be able to um, get some ideas, maybe if you're tired of knitting self-striping socks, right? Maybe somebody mm -hmm. would come and show off a self-striping item that isn't a pair of socks. I would never say that personally. <laughs> I love knitting socks, but other people might. So um, lots of upcoming items, including, and I saw the question in the YouTube stream here, we've got the free ZKN KAL tonight. Um, I will get that posted ASAP on um, the webpage. I'm sorry, work is bonkers, um, especially with being out of the office. So I'm, I'm playing catch up on, on lots of accounts, but that'll be out on the webpage. And if I can get it out on um, Instagram as well. So look for that shortly. For sure. Yeah, I, um, what did I want to say? Um, just so many, <laughs> sorry, I said a lot, on, right? Yeah, the, um, oh yes, my friend and me and I chose a brioche pattern. Um, look at you guys. And, it, and it's also another one that I really wouldn't have thought twice about if I hadn't um, racked my brain about it. I, I am now really excited to knit it because I'm going to use my advent calendar. Ooh. So it's exciting. It's All right. Good. Are we ready for the finished object? You bet. I don't have like a ton. Um, I was mentioning to Megan that um, one of my finished objects walked to school this morning. So um, I did finish that um, Dead of Night uh, sweater with the raven skulls on it. Um, and I posted like a one, um, you know, a sleeveless <laughs> version of it on Instagram. So most of the color work is in that. Um, but yeah, it walked to school. So it walked away this morning. I don't have it to share with you right now. Um, mm -hmm. And again, it didn't dawn on me until the kids were already out of the house that I was well, like, it's great oh, that, that your kid is wearing it, right? So yes, for sure. And I even sewed in one of those little like um, tags that says one of a kind or O-O-A-K, one of kind in it. So mm -hmm. it's exciting. But yeah, beyond that, I have my trough. Um, we already mentioned this is Leading Men Fiber Arts. Um, they're dramaturg based. 
and then uh, with that, um, and again, this was part of their monthly, um, which by the way, the monthly colorway this month, I love, love, love. And uh, I had to order another diva base of it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and then this lovely leftover mohair um, they had from another project uh, along with the uh, Jeanette Sun Valley fibers. So mm -hmm. all of the yardage counted because the help w double was, um, was with Jeanette's yarn. Yeah. And I am really, really enjoying how warm and snuggly it is. Uh, the DK weight version of the trough has a smaller neck hole um, so that it can kind of be up close um, for under a coat uh, in the winter. So um, if you're not necessarily a fan of that, I did find that um, from, you know, talking with other people who have knit it, uh, Shana and, mm -hmm. and uh, other people that, you know, if you just fold this piece down in the front, can kind of give you a little bit of room, but if you'd prefer a much looser one, the original trough would be the better, mm -hmm. better one to go with. Yep, absolutely. And Beautiful. It's got a pretty um, two color I cord bind off in there. Mm -hmm. It definitely looks warm. Yeah. And then um, this is my very first time knitting with um, Hayes House yarn at Jane's House. Sorry. But um, so I have those socks done. This is diamonds in the light pattern. Pa paper daisy. Is that yep. right? Yeah, so pretty. Love what so, it's doing with those speckles. You're, yes. They're on your hands, but they are for your feet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I don't have anything to show them off. And I'm going to have to remove some stuff from my feet because I'm wearing another finished object today. Yeah, you need to you need to have a sock blocker just on oh, standby. <laughs> on standby. They're all downstairs for some weird reason. I was taking photos. And then I also have the Holly Days socks. This is a DK weight uh, sock pattern. Pretty. Um, yeah, I decided not to carry this all the way down the foot. Um, it's toe up. And... And so I was like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to like this on my the top of my foot. Mm -hmm. um, I can get kind of picky about that stuff. So I just went all the way until um, you start the gusset increase. And then at that point, I went ahead and I picked up the pattern. So you'd see it kind of peeking out of a shoe if you were wearing it? Yep, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then um, two of those. Let's see, I did finish some self-striping socks. Ooh. So this is 716 uh, Knit Jenna OMG Heel. Mm -hmm. so I got all the points on this one. And yeah, I like them. Very bright. Yeah. Well, I love that color, that color. Um, obviously, that green is my, green is my thing. But I also really enjoy stripes that have kind of that um, watercolor variegated effect yeah 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 there's this in here the blue and orange aren't really all the way around stripes they're just in one stripe together mm -hmm. it's very cool super fun love your green toes <laughs> yeah had to match those up carefully mm -hmm. I just and had like a, a maybe I should save this for like a, a tips and tricks but like maybe blonde moment I don't know I was always ripping out this toe like and restarting it to try to get it to the same place there is also the ability to break the yarn and just start on the next color <laughs> I think I was trying to avoid weaving it in but at a certain point right. it becomes like a lot more work to rip out a whole toe and try to get it to match up based off of like having more or less tail <laughs> Yeah. I, have you done that? Or am I just the only person that was like thinking that I was being smart by ripping out the whole toe? And doing I used to do that. Okay. <laughs> I used to do that. My trick yeah. now is that I try to start where a change happens yeah. very close to. So you and, then when I, yeah. and then when I cast on immediately, that tail should be the same length as the one that I've already started. Yeah. And if it is, or very close to, then I keep knitting. I'm always and just so excited on the cast on that I just grab the tail and cast on, right? And so then uh, I, I give second sock some work, but 
but mm-hmm. I was creating a lot more work by trying to get it anyway. Sorry. I'm trying to see if that makes sense to people. So here, right? It does make sense. It makes sense to me. At least starting where you, you have a known length of, yeah, of yarn, right? Right. So, you know, this green goes into ye- orange here, right? Mm-hmm. And so then I just make sure that I start very close to that. So, you know, here's where I'm doing my cast and then on. When you're, and then I, right. I can see yeah. that this one is here. And then after you've done that, and you knit the first sock, you go back to that same place mm-hmm. and cast on. So then you're only doing that first um, Judy's magic, like of how many ever stitches. Small amount. Then, yeah. yeah, very small amount. And then once you see okay how close am I to that length yeah and, then keep and if you don't think of that and and you are trying to match them up and they're not matching up I'm just saying there's always the opportunity to break the yarn and get yourself to the right <laughs> exactly so yeah proceed okay and then I have um one mitten going along with the self-striping theme um I I'm really loving how this looks here. I'm hoping yeah. that I'll have enough white um, that I won't have to go fishing for more <laughs> white somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, it's really, really cute. Mm-hmm. So I hope to start that one and get, I'm, I'm a month behind because <laughs> I only have one and we're already in the third month, but I'm very close to having two. So hopefully I can get those the second one done and then cast on a third um, for March. Trip. Yep, for March. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know how close I am to that because of all of the sock knitting, I've been really hankering to get some sweaters on the needle. Mm-hmm. So, um, but my last project that is to be shown, I have to take off my feet. So it took me a second there, um, is these um, like Fauci house socks. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's Tiff um, Neeland. Neeland. And um, the yarn is uh, uh, fingering held double from Lavender Loon. And yeah. And you can kind of see like the next time I do this, I won't be as strict to the pattern because it's a lot of ends. You hold one color double, then another color double, then combined, marled, then the heel is the two colors and then, and then there's two more changes down here yeah next time I might do the top and the cuff and the toe but I'm not going to do these little micro ones yeah here and here because mm-hmm. that was just too much too much fussy um but again I did it the first time around because I wanted them to look just like the pattern mm-hmm. but yeah if I were to knit this pattern again with scraps from another um, you know, sock or whatever, I would leave out some of that fussiness. I might even do a full marled. Yeah. yeah not makes sense. Sense. Again, I think that that's part of the fun of it is that you can kind of decide to opt in or um, kind of go your own way, right? Yeah. No, I, I, I read it and went, mm, you know, I was on the fence. I really thought I'd just do them all marled. <laughs> But I was like, no, I really like the opposite coloring of the heel and toes and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big sucker for contrast heel and toe and um, yeah, cuff. So that's it. That's all that's fit to be had. Um, Okay. Well, I finished this. like a lot, but your stock numbers are going to blow mine away. I have a feeling. (laughs) It was my stress knitting again. Work is kind of crazy, but I finished this, I think, shortly after our last FO um, FO episode. This is the Semantics um, by Shana Lines. Uh, It's a really fun modular knit. Um, I held um, this uh, color from Knit Picks. It's a Caprita, Um, so it was deep stash. Like I found it as I was upstairs kind of going through stuff. I held it double with some three Irish girls and I believe this was a Stephen West, oh, why can't I, like a dotted raise kit. Mm. So you can see that it, there's um, a dark blue or a dark navy, um, this really vibrant green, this really vibrant purple. Um, and then um, what kind of got lost on the front, but you can see a little bit more in the back, is there is 
So I was striped a lot. Talk about a lot of ends and a lot of fussiness, but I was striping um, the green with this darker blue and then the green with a variegated. Mm -hmm. so there's a variegated that's got this green and the purple in it. I think you can see it a little bit more in the back, mm -hmm. maybe like this stripe right here. Um, but yeah, it was a fun use of some, um, not an advent sized kit, but they were, there were 50 grams per um, this green purple and um, dark, dark um, navy irrigated. And um, like you said, I was holding it double with a, um, a vendor yarn. So it's a right. Cinch it up on the sides if you wanted. Oh, it says my connection. Yep, I can lost you. Now? I can. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay. And I heard you. So am I back? I think we're a little slow, but yes. <laughs> I did see, so it always makes me very uncomfortable when I see my um, internet service provider truck go by earlier. <laughs> yeah. So I was making a fun face while I was frozen there. Um. <laughs> Wasn't but yeah, bad. you can you can cinch it on the side. You can wear it in lots of different ways. You know, as you know, with uh, Shana's wonderful designs, right? There's always there's always fun, um, versatile ways, backward, forward, sideways. Um, it's very warm, and it was a very quick knit. I think on um, to get gauge, I had like tens and fingering held double, mm. right? So I don't know if you can see the light through it. Um, yeah, but, loose. Yeah, yeah. So. Very, very fun. Um, if you've got some, it does take some yardage, does take some yardage. Um, I've seen some really pretty ones just as solids and DKs and not fingering held doubles, but um, yeah, a fun, a fun mitt. Am I, I still doing good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're good to um, Yeah, I ripped out the heels that I had finished at the end of last, um, of last month in um, January because I had been wearing these socks and did not like the afterthought OMG heel as I had designed it. Um, the heel flap was worked sideways um, and I've now pivoted into um, it being more of an envelope close. I don't know, you can probably see it better here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, this, there's, this was a true afterthought, not a forethought where you put in a, a line and you know you unravel or you cut in the very center and you unravel out, which I found that I like because then you have a, a piece of yarn on each side to kind of um, work with. But um, it's fun because you can work in the round here um, after you've done the heel cup. So that's really my selling point for this is if um, you don't like a afterthought heel, a traditional afterthought heel um, because of I, I need the heel cup to like more my foot into the bottom of it. Um, mm -hmm. So this is coming soon. Um, I'm working with a new tech editor um, and didn't get it done in time for Virginia Beach, but that's what I was, was hoping for. So hopefully it's coming soon. Um, and you can crank those tubes and add your toes and, and um, cuffs and then put in an afterthought OMG. Fun. Yes. So very fun. Did that with this isn't enough for us to get a, a, a crank. <laughs> <laughs> Amy wants a cranker. Um, this is Vax to Reality, which was another ZK um, or a ZK colorway uh, that I say another because I have another pair here. <laughs> um, this one is Zoom Life um, mm. of Queen City Yarn. This is a, a, a spacious OMG heel and the expanding community, which I think looks really pretty with mm -hmm. these like super, super variegated. Um, so yeah. Amy was like, do not challenge, do, I will never challenge you to knit socks again. <laughs> that was a pair of socks 
I also with Kato Yarn, which was um, I cast on on. Um, she's always going to sub her toe, get extra points, and just my like, heel is all away. <laughs> yes, these are monkey socks, worked toe up, modified the lace repeats, but Kato Yarn, be still my heart. Yeah, and pretty. yes, a spacious OMG heel got thrown in there. And then I made the legs super long. For whatever reason, I was really feeling the motif and I was like, I'm going to make these long legs, long legs. So there's um, <laughs> my self-striping, um, 716, um, self-striping pair of socks. I'm trying to remember what this one is called. This color is it the blue called. tongue skink? Yes, yes, buffalo skink. Yeah, okay. I, maybe I talked about them as a w work in progress, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the heel or the toe where I made the realization that it was starting to blue um, <laughs> slower. And I was like, oh, I can just break the yarn and start the blue now. I, yeah, I'm a smart person. Um, <laughs> I do enjoy the speckles though, the speckles on the, on the stripe. So, um, and Believe it or not, really kind of enjoyed just knitting a plain pair of socks with no patterning for whatever mm -hmm. reason. I don't know if it was the speckle stripes or what it was, but it, that made me happy. Um, also knit um, self-striping socks, the holographic socks um, by Cass Crookshank in her um, her collection. This is the second pair that I've knit, um, and the last time I was doing two self-striping so you didn't have the solid here um, to really make it you know very obvious I held these up while we were talking with um, with Jesse because I was like contrast 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 Oop, gets a little lost there right in person you can see a little better um, but I do love that self-striping they pick out the, the colors for you obviously subbed in <laughs> a spacious OMG oh amy so yeah lots of socks oh oh a last pair last pair that i can throw to no, the pile I, I, I remember there was there was more than one a week <laughs> that's all i know i was like holy crap how many are you yes. gonna knit <laughs> you do remember the year that i made a pair a week right yeah but this is more than that uh so yeah i used um some really pretty kato yarn and um this is uh uh Three Irish girls, Mystique, I believe is the colorway. I'm walking around telling everybody that this was MCN. It was not MCN. I went home and found the, it is, it's just their Adorn base, which is so yeah. decadent, right? There's Adorn Lux, right? So yeah. maybe it was yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And so heels, toes, and did my own stripe, stripe there to maximize the, um, the uh yeah what I have left over here in the in the red so yeah lots of socks anybody that heard me speak at Virginia Beach will know that I um based off of starting when you when I learned how to knit at that coffee shop in um at uh, Dunn Brothers based off and it was February so mm -hmm. February 2009 um that's about 4,800 days and I've knit um you know 3,800 pairs of socks, which is 600 socks. So I'm averaging about a sock every eight days. <laughs> Crazy, but these are all for my feet slash Ellie's feet. Her feet are getting close enough that um, we can we can share socks. So I don't, but don't tell her. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Because then she might start taking my shoes. I'm much more particular. Oh, about okay. Uh, I also knit a pair with some... Um, a pair of my seamless Salomas uh, with a beautiful green director's interpretation from um, from Leading Men Fiber Arts, and just you know took that DK weight and bam, it felt like it was a pair of uh, seamless Salomas pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. That's a free pattern out there, and um, super stretchy, super fun. Does things with um, does things with that super variegated yarn. Mm -hmm. I took the leftovers and made the world's simplest um, mitts by Tin Can Knits. Mm -hmm. um, I have small hands, so I was able to eke out with 
a very generous DK weight skein, a pair of these, as, as well as my, um, my other ones. And then I took the leftovers from this and turned it into some more. So these were kind of inspired by um, people were making, or not people, Michelle of Wool and Dinosh made a pair with her leftover advent um, held double. And I just really enjoy what, what it, what it did with the yarn. So mm -hmm. a couple of pairs of mitts, lots of pairs, lots yeah. of pairs. If you're noticing a, a theme, theme between Amy and myself, we embraced the challenge of February. <laughs> I knew I had to like keep up, you know, and that's why some of mine were DK weight socks because I wasn't going to keep up otherwise. <laughs> I was impressed that I got two pairs of regular socks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the self-striping ones were started before the month, but I was still yeah. impressed that I got them both completed before the end. <laughs> yes. Socks are definitely one of those things that because you're not like picking it up and flipping it and it's in the round and it's small circumference, I feel like I just went crazy on all of my meetings and Zooms, right? So. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm VKN zooming or whether or not I'm sitting in a meeting um, where I don't, I, I find that when I'm when I have to talk and I have to present, I use my hands too much. <laughs> I don't, I'm not knitting then. But if I'm um, in a meeting where I'm not talking, um, <laughs> my hands don't aren't part of the talking process. I can I can make those socks. So for sure, yeah. I was yeah. just looking at my self striping in the corner because I haven't started my self striping yet um, because of the the mitten still yet to go. But yeah, I got to get on March too. Okay. So <laughs> super exciting, super exciting about the um, Rio Shalong. Come and chat with us for free tonight. Um, uh, once I get, I did post it in the chat um, as well. So I'm sorry if I was distracted a little bit there. Um, the YouTube chat um, as well as on the website coming soon and show and share this weekend and um leslie robinson the next so excited so excited and i have um another really exciting one that i that somebody reached out and said you should ask these people to speak so lots coming okay. up super excited very awesome yeah. bye <laughs> bye hoopta Whew.